so a couple of weeks ago I was doing my tax and for the third year in a row I realized that I have spent quite a lot of money on candles actually I think it's probably the fourth year in a row so I had this brainwave that maybe I should consider making my own candles. I've never made candles before, although I had a friend a few years ago who made all of her own candles for her wedding. And I thought it was a really great idea back then, but then for whatever reason, I forgot about it and didn't try to go back to it. But I've decided that I want to try making my own candles and just seeing how it goes. So I purchased a candle making kit from a local company and it's a pretty basic kit and the fragrance is like a ambery myrrh fragrance I think and yeah I just I feel like I need to give this a go. I think it could be really fun and it might be a, a more economical way to scent my home because I do go through a lot of candles and the other thing that really prompted this was I went through a couple of the cabinets where I've been shoving all of the empty candle jars and there were literally like several boxes of empty candle jars in there so I disposed of some of them the ones that you know didn't look very nice and then I thought well I really don't have a use for all of these candle jars but if I were to make my own candles maybe I could repurpose a few of them I know that you're not supposed to reuse candle jars over and over and over again but I feel like maybe one more time would be okay because these are pretty sturdy glasses and they're designed for candles anyway so that's what we're going to do today we're going to we're going to learn how to make candles so I hope you enjoy this Okay, so while I'm waiting for the wax to melt, I've just been reading the instructions. I don't have any pegs or anything to hold the wicks, so, but I did see a video online where they poured the wax and then they just kept adjusting manually the position of the wick, so I'll just do that this time around. There is no fill line on these jars, so I don't exactly know how high I'm supposed to fill them, but, and I know that you're supposed to try and pour them all in one go, not like bit by bit, but we'll see how we go. This is how the wax is looking so far. It's sort of, it's getting there. It's starting to become more liquid. Okay, so I'm going to add my fragrance in now. It's at, it's sitting at just under 70 degrees, the wax. So um, the fragrance that I have is Moroccan Amber and Myrrh. As you would probably gather, when you smell it out of the bottle, it's a lot stronger than what it will be in the candle. But I like it. It, do, it is a very nice sort of fluffy amber fragrance, a little bit resinous, tiny bit smoky, quite sweet, um, and also quite aromatic as well. Like a, it's got a bit of a minty, cooling aspect to it. Yeah, it's nice. We'll see how it goes. So obviously when you add the fragrance in, the temperature drops a little and we're still sitting at about 65 degrees. So I think it says to pour at no more than 60 degrees Celsius. So I kind of need to mix this in a little bit and wait for the temperature to drop. It smells okay. It's probably a little bit sweet for what I wanted. Once I've mastered the the actual 
candle making process, maybe I can then, I can start to focus on some custom blends of fragrance to try and make something that suits what I'm after. Because ultimately the goal here is for me to be able to come up with a candle that I want my home to smell like pretty much all the time. Or, you know, a, a series of candles that I want to make for myself over and over. Nearly there. I'm stirring with a thermometer, which is really naughty. We were always taught in chemistry school never to stir things with your thermometer. But I, I suspect that partly the reason for that was that they didn't want us to break the thermometers. The reason I set the candles up on this side of the bench and not on the kitchen side is that once you've poured them, you're not supposed to move them for at least 12 hours. This is such a satisfying thing to do. I don't know why I find it so satisfying <laughs> because I don't really enjoy cooking that much. The thought of having a candle at the end of this that I really want to burn is kind of exciting. And so of course I'm making six as part of this pack, but if they turn out okay, I might consider um, giving them to friends. I'm gonna have to dispose of this dye block. I didn't wanna put the dye in. I, I just, I don't really like colored wax in my candles. I really prefer the look of, you know, that creamy white wax. And ultimately, if I if this works and I find it a really nice experience and I want to make more candles for myself. I think I'll get some amber candle glasses so that they match kind of the rest of my decor. Right, we're nearly there. All right, well, we're not quite at 60 degrees yet, but I just want to try the first couple and just see, and it might be a bit of an experiment to see if they turn out better or worse. I need to move this chair. Okay, so... Also, if there's less wax in here, it may cool quicker. I'm surprised at how long it actually... Oh, here we go. I'm surprised at how long it took to cool, actually. That's kind of heartening because I was a little bit worried that I would be so disorganised and then the wax would cool too quickly. The thing that worried me the most was the pouring part because the videos that I've seen, they were like, oh, you gotta pour it just at the right speed. Don't pour too fast, don't pour too slow. And it kind of made me nervous. Okay, if I put the rubber band in the middle, it went perfectly. I'm so happy about that. All right, candles are done. That was really fun. I quite enjoyed that. It was, I wouldn't say it was a complicated process, but I imagine that once I get to the point of testing out different waxes and trying to get the wicks right and testing out to see if I can make my own signature fragrance for my own candles, then that'll probably be where the, the real labor comes in. But as, as test candles, I think, I, you know, they're looking okay for the moment. The only thing I would do differently is next time I would seek to work out where I need to fill it to. Anyway, I'm now in my office and I really, really need to tidy it up. It's an absolute, disgrace actually i'm a little bit embarrassed i would be embarrassed if somebody would have come up here right now <laughs> so i need to tidy up um yeah it was pretty crazy i've got a handbag up here a pair of shoes and that was just because i had so many meetings this week just gone that you know every time i went out to an event i had a networking event on yesterday at lunchtime and i had to race home and I literally had to dial into the meeting while I was still in the Uber coming home because we got stuck in traffic. And then I literally had to race upstairs. And so all of my, you know, my handbag and my shoes and everything are up here. Anyway, it's, it's a mess. And there's just stuff all over my desk, bits of paper, candles strewn everywhere, bottles of perfume that I'm testing so that I can talk about them on videos. It's just, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. Let's, uh, 
<laughs> oh god, let's do this. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Driving through days and nights. Won't stop for traffic lights. And I Searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head So I'm supposed to be vlogging today and I completely forgot I went out totally forgot to take you with me Oh well, never mind So I'm just going to close this door because I'm a bit worried it's going to rain this afternoon So I went to Bunnings and uh, so the reason I went to Bunnings was because I bought a makeup palette a couple of weeks ago. It was one of those hourglass fancy ones and everyone was losing their mind over these makeup palettes and I just happened to be in store when they had some and on the morning that they were selling them. So I grabbed one like that was like the last one of this particular type, the Dragon palette, I think it was. You know, I'd been kind of intrigued by them. I didn't know if I wanted it or not, but you know, I just, there was so much hype about it. I was just curious. I, I used it for a few days, but I, I just, it's, it was fine. It was a very lovely palette, don't get me wrong, but I either just don't care enough about makeup or, you know, it just wasn't, there was just nothing about it that was making me go, wow, you know, this is so amazing. So anyway, I, I sold it to a girl who had missed out and she really, really wanted one and she lived locally. So we decided to meet up at Bunnings and then I grabbed, I had to go to Bunnings anyway because I needed a, a new watering can because mine broke. And then I grabbed a couple of plants as well. All right, so no judging the back of my car, right? This is where Poppy sits. <laughs> There's my watering can, new one. I used to have a really nice sort of um, vintage style metal one, but the metal ones, these break off all the time. So I'm going to see how just this plain old plastic one goes. And then I got one of these. I just saw these, these were on special, and I just thought it was a really pretty color. I just like it. So I thought I would give it a go. It's a Dichondra. Anyway, it looks really pretty and I thought, I'll see how it goes. If it's sturdy enough and if I can keep it alive, I might buy some more and then hang them over the balcony. Now that we have our deck finished, well, it's sort of finished, we need to furnish it, but it's structurally finished. And then I bought a basil plant because basil seems to be getting really hard to get at the moment. So I thought having one at home would be nice. Also, this jasmine smells amazing. I have you perched behind the steering wheel right now but uh you're gonna have to move in a second but i'll open the gate first yeah so i'm off to panizzi's the boys have run out of obviously they're busy doing work on the house uh they're sanding the ceiling at the moment which is a great job i'm so glad i am not involved in that and uh, I am going to get them some refreshments because it's getting quite hot and sticky today. Anyway, um, so we're off to Panizzi's, which is my local sort of Italian um, deli, I guess you could call it. And I'm going to get some ricotta and some like um, San Pellegrino soft drink. I don't know, the, the fancy schmancy soft drink ones. We really like the blood orange and the limonata. Poppy is sitting up at the top of the stairs watching me forlornly. Hang on, let's see if I can get her. She's like, are you really going to go out without me, mum? Really? Oh, she's so, so cute. Anyway, all right, had enough of you. Go on inside. Okay, so I think I figured out what my problem with my camera has been for the last couple of weeks. I think I've always had it on manual mode and I switched it out of manual mode and that's what's caused the problem. And I'm still in my gym gear from this morning. All I've done is wash my face and put a tiny bit of makeup on and sorry, I am knocking the camera because you are precariously perched right now. But yeah, I went to the gym this morning and 
um, I came back and I had meetings straight away so I haven't had time to get changed all I could do was wash my face like put a tiny bit of makeup on and throw on a shirt but otherwise I'm still in my gym gear from this morning which is pretty gross but I didn't get that sweaty so hopefully it should be okay <laughs> hopefully it's not too gross I had a package arrive today um, this is from De Grey D Grey and they're a Vietnamese brand and I saw somebody post about this perfume on Instagram the other week and uh, I was immediately curious and then I went into the Facebook groups and a couple of people had tried some from this brand already and so I was talking to some local people about it and anyway I decided to bite the bullet and I, I bought a 15 ml bottle and yeah I thought I would just unbox this with you right now so so this is the box and I'm assuming that just come oh okay 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 so it's actually you know transparent that's cool that's cool and ooh, that's so interesting okay I like I like packaging that's a little bit different uh, so the perfume that's the perfume card and then the uh, the box hang on opens up like that and inside I'm so pleased that the bottle is actually like a miniature replica of the full-size bottle so this is only a 15 mil let me pull it out how adorable is that <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I love it that's just so it's called jasmine rice so obviously I was interested because of the jasmine I do quite like rice perfumes but I, I just think I just think that is so adorable I love it when brands do uh, miniature bottles or like smaller format bottles in the same style as the full-size bottle that is so cute all right so let's test it out I'm gonna put it straight on skin I'm gonna go be brave mmm okay interesting definitely getting the rice note uh, it's quite floral and it really it really smells like a like an Asian holiday it smells like Bali or Vietnam I guess maybe it's the, the rice aspect but it's the the combination of the rice with the florals and the florals are very delicate they're um, very kind of watery or translucent not watery as in lily like but watery as as in really light and translucent okay so let's have a look um, because I know obviously there's jasmine in it because of the name uh, and I am definitely getting jasmine it's kind of green as well but not too green kind of spicy it's almost almost like a almost a waxiness even though um, it's also got that ricey feel to it interesting all right I, I'm just going to go I have to go and jump into a meeting but I just thought I'd unbox this because I wanted to be able to sniff it and I'll give you an update after my meeting about how it's wearing but so far I really like it it's really quite a nostalgic scent actually it reminds me of all my holidays in Bali and Vietnam and Thailand <laughs> it's just got that that vibe about it you know oh I like it I like it all right See you soon. Hi, it is now, what day is it? It's choose Tuesday. Itchy nose. We flew back in to Brisbane yesterday morning. We had the red eye flight back from Perth. That was torture. It actually felt like a long haul flight, as in like a 15 hour flight that we would normally do from here to Dubai on our way to Europe or something. It was, it, I was so restless. I had restless legs. I just wanted to get up and move around and I couldn't. It was a bit of a shame actually, because we managed to get an upgrade on the flight home. And it was just a 737 plane. So the, the business class in the 737s is not, you know, like you don't have a life flight bed or anything like that, but it's still nice. You've still got more room. They serve you nicer food, you know, it's nice. I was a bit of a zombie yesterday. I did not work yesterday because 
uh, obviously I'd had no sleep so I took a sick day uh, and then today ironically I feel like I'm coming down a little bit with a cold so I genuinely am feeling sick and I don't want to take another sick day so I'm back at work uh, but yeah I've just got a bit of a headache I feel a bit sort of itchy in my throat you know the usual symptoms of a bit of a cold and it's probably just because it was a big week last week obviously going back to the town where I used to live you are spending time running around catching up with people that you haven't seen in a really long time and of course with mum being in hospital which she's doing very well now thank you all for your kind messages on that video that I posted the operation that she had was a fairly standard type of operation lots of people have it um, but she had a few minor complications so that's you know I was just a bit worried and um, it just kept her in hospital for a bit longer and because my parents live in the country normally it was just really hard for dad to get down to see her every day and I just didn't want her sitting in hospital by herself the whole time. I mean, obviously, when you go visit, you're only really there for an hour or two a day. But I think for somebody who's in hospital, um, just having someone come in and see you and just knowing that someone is nearby if they need anything. Um, yeah, that's that was my whole purpose for going back to Perth for a week, basically. So anyway she is she's been transferred to a country hospital closer to where they live which is a good sign because they wouldn't take her until she was really stable um, which is great so she's on the mend she should be out of there in another week or so fingers crossed and uh yeah so i'm i'm glad i went it was it was a hectic week a stressful week emotional week but a good week so today as i said i'm back at work and i feel like the house is really chaotic still uh, i think the electrician was meant to be coming today to install lights but it's after lunch and he hasn't showed up yet so i'm not sure when he's going to be coming and yeah yesterday i had to go get my braces adjusted and i'm actually surprised that i can talk today because my teeth are pretty sore but not in the same way that they've been sore in previous adjustments and the best thing is they took the spring off the bottom teeth which they had put in to spread everything out and create more room and now i've got the power chains on so everything should now come back together and sit nicely within the next few weeks so that's pretty exciting I keep telling myself I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that I won't need to have these braces on for the entire like 18 months to two years that they quoted me I think I'm probably deluding myself but uh, it's like it's a, a mindset that's getting me through because <laughs> I keep telling myself oh you know I'll only have them on for another six months or something and that just I don't know it seems like a much more doable timeline than you know trying to think about 18 months to two years because l let's just say I have not enjoyed having braces at all whatsoever in fact I've hated every moment of it <laughs> And I know that there's some people who, you know, it really doesn't phase them. Um, it's not so much about how they look and I don't really care about how other people perceive me either. It's not about that. It's just that they're really uncomfortable and I hate not being able to eat normally. And I don't mind the cleanup process because I've always been, you know, a fairly fastidious tooth cleaner so that doesn't phase me at all it is a little bit more finicky when you've got braces obviously but i still floss every day sometimes more than once a day uh, and i have a bit of a routine and it doesn't take me that long so that's fine but my stepdaughter and i both got braces within a week of each other so we're going through the journey together and we're both sharing the pain which sometimes I think is really lovely and then other times I, I wonder if maybe we wouldn't whinge so much or we wouldn't be complaining so much if we didn't have someone to complain to who was going through the same thing but we both had a giggle at the fact that we've both independently stumbled on this forum in reddit which is just called braces and basically it's just this forum where a lot of people post about you know 
their their journey of having braces and whenever somebody new posts in there and you know their first day they're like I don't know if I can do this which is exactly how I felt like I don't know if I can get through I don't like I can barely get through the t first 24 hours how am I going to get through two years of this and so many people respond saying oh don't worry you get used to it others are like oh you know after a couple of months you barely even notice that they're there but the one that always gets me, and there's always one, there's always one person who says this, by the time I got my braces taken off, I was really sad about it. And that's just where I check out and I go, now I know you're lying. <laughs> like, that's just too much of an overstatement. I cannot, we'll put it this way. I will not be that person. I will not be that person on the last day getting my braces off and feeling sad about it. I'd be curious to know if any of you watching would claim to have that experience because I know quite a few of you have had braces and particularly braces as an adult. So I, I would be curious to know if you feel that you felt sad and lost after having your braces taken off because I can guarantee I will not feel that way. And just to clarify, I am four months in now on this whole braces thing. So yes, I would say I'm used to them to the point of being able to tolerate them but I still hate them and I cannot wait to get them taken off. The other thing too is that even though I, I, don't, I don't think about or I don't worry about what people think in terms of how I look, but I really, really hate editing videos of me now talking to a camera face to face. And, you know, I'm just, I'm in a, I'm in a phase at the moment where, you know, I've got the braces, I'm... Um, I've engaged in a, a bit of a fitness program to try and get my fitness back and that's just taking forever, way longer than I expected. You know, always I've had the type of body where, you know, I can easily get a little bit chunky and a little bit overweight, but I can also very easily lose it and get back into shape and get my fitness back up as well. But for some reason, I don't know if it's just my age now, but I'm finding it a lot harder this time around. And it's just taking me so much longer to get back into a routine and feeling good and feeling energized. I'm not there yet. So I'm feeling like crap. I look like crap. <laughs> and I'm just, there's other stuff going on too at the moment, which is creating a bit of stress outside of, you know, these videos. And it's fine. The circumstances that, you know, I am a little bit stressed at the moment, so I'm trying to manage that as well. That's partly why I haven't been filming as much and I've been really struggling to get into the mindset of sitting down and doing a sit down video where I talk about a theme or a particular, you know, range of perfumes or anything like that. I just, my brain, it's, it's so much effort just to even get through a normal day without having to think about that. But you know, my brain is just really struggling at the moment. So that's why I haven't been doing as many videos. And when I do do a video, they're very raw like this, uh, no makeup, hair not done and not really thought out. I just want to say that I appreciate those of you who are sticking around, despite the fact that there is no structure on this channel at the moment. And even the things that you've requested for me to talk about, I'm kind of not getting to because I'm sort of I'm struggling to actually do those things at the moment. I'm just hoping that if I just make a record of the idea <laughs> then at some point things will settle down, I will feel better and life will be calmer and I will be able to get back to it on a more regular basis. So anyway hopefully you will all be here to see that <laughs> but also if uh, if you're not enjoying the more free form blow by blow in the moment uh, content then I also understand as well. Just got out of my meeting and realized that I hadn't even spoken about the perfume that I'm wearing as my scent of the day which was kind of the point of turning the camera on today. So this is Tiger by Her Side by Sana Jardin and I've had this for a few years now but I haven't really worn it as you can see but that's just because I have so many amber fragrances. I've literally spritzed this on everywhere today. What I like about this one is that it is quite a sweet, it's got that fairy, comforting, cozy amber feel to it. 
but there is something really sweet in here as well which is probably why I haven't worn it a ton because I do gravitate a lot towards amber perfumes that may still be sweet but in a more resinous way this is resinous I get I definitely get you know benzoin and a bit of patchouli but there's also quite a bit of rose in here and there's something in the opening which I always put down to a fruitiness but there's no fruits listed per se other than bergamot I think so it's either due to the sweetness from the resins combined with the rose and the cinnamon and the coriander in the opening or um, what I'm getting from this today is that it kind of reminds me a little bit like it has a bit of a cherry vibe and I'm not sure it's either cherry or just dark fruits like stewed fruits but there is yeah I get this sort of fruitiness in the opening which I, and I don't know where it's coming from anyway I really really love it. it what I also really like about this one is there is a brightness to it it sort of feels lighter and fresher compared to a lot of other ambery perfumes that can be quite heavy and resinous and my battery is about to run out but suffice to say this is a really lovely one to wear all year round <music> Okay, so bring it here. I, uh, I'm down the park with Poppy. We've had probably about two days of just solid rain, which has been pretty mental. And I thought I'd make the most of the sunshine this morning, even though it's pretty soggy down here, to uh, actually just get her out and run her around a little bit. I am wearing Tuberose, not Tuberose Criminal, uh, Tuberose Astral today by amazing Crivelli. Yeah, I don't love this. The opening is so weird. The whole perfume is just weird actually. I'm, I'm trying to find the words to describe it but you know you've got the sweet tuberose in there which is really really sweet and then there's something in there I guess it's the spices and the cinnamon and stuff that sort of uh, has this real acrid -y sharpness to it and then you know, after it dries down a little bit, you also get this really, for want of a better term, kind of skanky BO type undertone to it, which I guess might also just be from the spices. And yeah, I'm really just, I'm just not loving it. You know, I remember trying this a few months ago and thinking it wasn't so bad. Obviously, as the weather warms up, it's, uh, it's less tolerable because, I mean, it's pretty warm here today, but uh, I definitely tried it first in winter time and I, I thought it wasn't too bad I mean I still got that kind of BO undertone but I didn't think it was so bad but there is just something today it's I don't know if it's got amber wood or something in it that like that really sharp nose burning <laughs> sort of woody undertone it's a hard no for me I think mm -hmm. 